Oh. Hi everyone, welcome to the BA Slash event. We are on number six now, so thank you very much for coming back for more. And if you are new to BA Slash, um, welcome again, and a quick introduction of me. So I'm, I'm Monique Ho, I work at BA Systems Applied Intelligence as a management consultant. I'm experiencing business analysis, um, cybersecurity, corporate innovation, um, agile um, transformation. And outside of work, I really enjoy helping NGOs, charities, and open source projects to scale up smartly. We also have Alan, another organizing committee of BA Slash. Alan, would you like to introduce yourself too? Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Alan Wishart. Uh, I work as a business consultant for um, a software vendor called uh, Eurobase. I've been a, a business analyst on and off for the last kind of 20 odd years, I suppose. Um, experience of the software development lifecycle, both agile and waterfall. I have to say, if that agile, um, very much focused myself on the, the business side of business analysis rather than the technical side. Yeah, that's good. Thank you, Alan. Um, so, PA slash, we are a community for for all, and it's a peer led content focus group um, to explore insights and techniques together regardless of um, organizational boundaries. So please spread the word with your contacts, tweet us, follow us on LinkedIn and on YouTube. BA Slash now is a community with um, 350 plus people. So uh, a shout out actually to um, Kaya, Finot, um, uh, Daniel and, and Daniel, they spoke to us and uh, share their top challenges in their roles. Um, they, they gave us some suggestions to, to grow VA Slash to a bigger, stronger, more sustainable community. And there's actually a survey um, to capture your suggestions on topics and events. So thank you for those who completed it. So if you, you haven't, I would highly encourage you to, to do one. So Alan, if we can share the link of the, the survey, survey in the, the chat box, that would be great. And and so far, from even from the, the few responses that we've got, uh, we observe something really interesting. So, for example, topics like um, product ownership, product management are top voted, followed by tooling, surface design, user research, design sprints, that sort of thing. And then more, the, the more traditional BA skills and techniques, they came kind of after. So, for example, the um, requirements or, or the process engineering. So, so yeah, so please do complete the, the survey because it's important that we plan events um, based on your needs and your interests. You also told us on the survey that you want more opportunities to meet one another. So we are thinking of hosting oh, events that you can um, basically come up with a, a Monique, oh. with a open heart to bounce ideas and leave the section with some options and some new connections as well. So um, it's open to all, and we, we just need some more volunteer facilitating like type of events. So please contact us if you are interested in this. And next slide. So a couple of um, housekeeping points. So you will receive the slide deck and a recording of this session in a couple of days. And we, um, if that's okay, if you could put your, your line on mute, that would be helpful because we are doing a recording at the moment and we'll uh, upload it to, to YouTube. So uh, feel free to unmute your, your line at the um, Q&A later. And you can also put your, your questions in the, the chat box where Adam will be collating and ask questions towards the end. Last but not least, um, you are very welcome to, to stay behind for the breakout sessions and do some networking and meet people. It's a great pleasure to have Kevin. So Kevin is my mentor for, for a number of years now. Um, I use, if I need to use like three hashtags to introduce him, um, they are David Bowie, because Kevin is a big fan of David Bowie. Okay. <laughs> And the next one, art. Um, actually, lots of conversations between Kevin and I happen in the art galleries at Pate Morden, and I really enjoy them. Okay. Yeah. 
And the final one, um, storytelling. So Kevin is very good at it. And the way that he explains things is very concise, very thorough, and flows very well. And whenever you listen to him to explain something, you feel that, yeah, things are in safe hands. <laughs> Cool. So I invited Catherine for today's event because some of you share the questions around oh, what is surface design and um, how that's different from business analysis. Catherine, he is very experienced in surface design and works alongside business analysts. So getting a view from him would be really good. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Catherine. Okay, great. Um, thanks for the uh, the uh, invitation and those, those three hashtags. I didn't know which ones you were going to uh, choose, so uh, <laughs> they're, 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 they're slightly uh, embarrassing. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm going to share my screen now here. Yeah? So, um, yeah. So uh, thanks everyone for joining. Um, a little bit of background to me. Um, so uh, design is not art, <laughs> they're quite different things. I, I undertook a uh, Bachelor of Arts degree, um, uh, uh, studied sociology, uh, but my first company was KPMG and um, in their consulting division, I uh, did a lot of business process re-engineering as it was called back in the day. Um, and 15 years ago, I moved into a design agency, a design and build agency called Zetica, um, which was subsequently bought by BAE. And so I have seen um, and experienced the life of a business consultant and now um, as a design consultant, um, service design. And I think these two, uh, these two spaces uh, very much sit uh, alongside each other in many of the projects that I do. And I do think there's an opportunity for people who have an aptitude towards design and service design to make a, a sort of cross between uh, doing business consulting and business analysis and moving into service design. So I'm gonna uh, tackle that, that, that sort of opportunity as I go through the presentation. I think I've got about 20 minutes. So, um, I only have a few slides. I have um, about six slides. Um, I'm going to start off by talking a little bit about the context of where I work, um, the company I work for, um, but not very much about that because I'm going to move uh, to talk about um, service design in the horizontal manner. So as a service design happens over time and compare that to how business analysis may, be, may contribute to a project over time. So I'm going to do that in the double diamond uh, um, sort of framework. I then look at work from a vertical perspective, uh, top and bottom, so front stage and backstage. So I'll be looking at those two perspectives. So where do I work? Um, um, I work in a um, a place which has a sort of a design studio at the back and research labs at the front um, and a place called Spotless. And you can see here that I suppose like many of you, we use lots of post-it notes, but we also do lots of sketches. Um, we use uh, Sketch, the application, Adobe products and other, other, other aspects. Um, the company I work for is about 20 people and it's comprised of uh, designers, um, user, uh, research consultants, um, and so forth. Um, just to give you a bit of a feel for the sort of projects I work on, most of them are commercial. We do do some government work, but most of it's in the area of financial services, um, uh, social media like Facebook, um, uh, telecoms, and some gaming companies. We're doing quite a lot of work with our PlayStation at the moment as they gear up for the release of their new console. Um, we also work in the health area and charities such as uh, Change for a Live. And that gives you a bit of a feel for the sort of projects that I work on. Okay, so to move on to the core of the content, this is the first of the two dimensions I wanted to look at, which is the horizontal dimension, projects over time. This is called the double diamond and it was introduced by the Design Council around 15 years ago. And this is its second iteration. It hasn't really changed very much. So I've added a little bit more detail but essentially what it moves through is a challenge on the left-hand side through to an outcome on the right-hand side. And to get there, it suggests that a successful project 
use an iterative approach to move through the first diamond, discover and define. And then after having defined the problem statement, you move into developing and deliver. So that this is a, a sort of a, a process which just about all our projects go through. Sometimes my company may only be involved in the first diamond and not very much in the second. And I presume there's a lot of projects out there which a lot of the time is in that second uh, diamond. The reason why they're a diamond is that the first phase of discover is when you expand your thought processes into what, uh, what the challenge is. So you'd be doing user research, finding out about the problem space and expanding your horizons. And having done that, you then define what you're really trying to tackle. What is the problem you're trying to solve? How might we solve a particular problem? And you get it down to that junction point where you've defined the problem. Once you've defined the problem, you then go through a development stage where you expand out again in ideating ideas around how to solve the problem. And once you have explored how you might do that, there may be sketches and prototypes, you then narrow down to deliver the single entity that you want for your product or service to achieve your outcome. So that's the Design Council Double Diamond. Most design agencies out there uh, work to this. Many of the design and build companies, IT companies, will also follow uh, this process. So we've got a couple of polls for you that we wanted to ask and see whether people having uh, gone through this, um, recognize, uh, recognize this, this approach. And I'm gonna ask people through a poll whether they feel that they work in their own space, um, in the work that you do, whether you work in the first diamond or the second diamond. So Alan, do you have a poll that you can share? We certainly should have. We should do this now. Okay, good. So the question is, now that you've seen the double diamond, where do you think that you fit? You fit mostly on the left-hand side in the, the discover and define, or do you fit more in the develop and, and, and deliver? Okay, so while, while that's going on, um, I'm going to move into uh, an example of, of this, um, of this uh, double diamond while that poll's going. I'm just gonna move it because I can't see what I'm looking at. Right, so this is um, an example of a project that um, I was involved in a couple of years ago at Vodafone, where we redesigned the My Vodafone app. Um, now, I'm going to say that I've deliberately made the images slightly blurry. Uh, so even though this project is now live, um, some of the information there, I want to maintain some of my client confidentiality. There, there's, there's not that very much there, which I believe is particularly sensitive but I'm um, just playing it safe a little bit, hence the slightly blurry images. So I've got sort of um, an example of activities which happen um, in each of those phases in the double diamond. And, um, and some example, obviously not an extensive list of some of the activities which a service designer might do or a business analyst might do. So in the discover phase, what a the service design team are likely to be doing is understanding the user through research, uh, uh, documenting their objectives and emotional deeds, potentially using a framework like the jobs to be done framework. In the meantime, we're often, I often coming across business analysts who've been talking to stake, business stakeholders and product owners, and they've been defining the business objectives. In the case of my Vodafone, they wanted to um, uh, trend, uh, change the my Vodafone app from just being about bills and charges to also selling new services and uh, upgrading uh, phones. Um, and they often would bring in some considerations around the technology. And so the business analysts would be, take part in these workshops. So this is a, a service design workshop here that you, that you see. And from memory, there are about three uh, business analysts in, in that meeting. Once we've uh, gone out and explored what could be the, the uh, needs, such as the emotional needs and the user objectives, uh, we then start documenting it. So the image I have um, in the second column is what 
we call a user universe. It has a few dimensions here around lifestyle, Vodafone technology, and so forth. And what we're trying to do there is just trying to map out some influencing elements and some, or the way in which the My Vodafone app would have to fit into to people's lifestyles. So what we're often quite do, doing here, quite often, is, is trying to define the how might we question, that, that bit in the middle about what, what do we actually want to actually then go and design. So it's how might we upsell a new, serve, a new Vodafone service to our customers? How might we present information around uh, the connectivity of that IoT device? There are all these how might we questions. In the meantime, um, the, uh, the, the business analysts we worked with were defining what KPIs we wanted. They had a KPI around how often people were opening up the, month, the, the app each month. So what percentage of the Vodafone customer base were opening up the, uh, the app each month? And that, that it, it, the, the, the theory being, if people open up, if more, a greater percentage of the, uh, the customer base open up the app every month, it meant that fewer calls were going to the contact center and that uh, their, their customers were more in control of their services from Vodafone. Right, so then moving to the right-hand side, having to define what we wanted to do, we then moved into design concepts and ideation uh, uh, for, for that. And so that was the sort of the, 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 uh, the discovery phase, uh, the sort of the develop phase. Lots of ideas, ways in which we could solve it, different ways of using navigation, uh, different services. And the final one was um, in deliver where we, this is the longest phase, we have sprint based, we had two week sprints. Um, service designers are sort of pulling back and, and helping to inform the UX, the uh, user experience, wireframes, visual design, and heading over to uh, developers. In this, in th in this uh, phases, uh, the business analysts on the Vodafone project were doing backlog grooming, the management of that, defining user stories, um, and helping uh, unlock various options which, which we could go as far as defining success for the designs. So that's a, an, an explanation of how I think the two activities compare um, through the life cycle of a project. Um, and let, let's have a look at the results of the, um, of the double diamond. So we've got, I think the winners here, Alan, are, are we have more people saying they're ambidextrous, yes? So working both at the front stage of a project, that's the sort of front part of the project and then that's a part. So working both, both diamonds. Not only one person, only sort of focusing on the, uh, the develop and deliver and a lot of people working in discover and design. So that's a really interesting um, survey on, on, on where people are. Okay, so um, I can get rid of that. Okay, so my next one um, uh, is on. Can I get rid of this poll on top? On, on, over, over uh, that, you should just be able to shut it down, but I have closed it. So yeah. Okay. Are people seeing that? Are, are people seeing that poll on my screen or not? No. No. Okay, that's good. Okay, so the second uh, dimension I want to talk about is the, um, the vertical one. And so we've just talked about how projects work from left to right. And this is about what sort of depth you put into the project. So in service design, we're often focused on the user. So um, we're very much looking at what we call the front stage. Um, that's what's visible to a customer. I've got an example on my next page. My last, my last um, page is an example of this. And then you have the backstage. So those are all, all the processes which a customer may not see. So while the front stage, you have journeys and channels and touch points, at the backstage, there can be uh, processes um, that need to be in place in an organization to deliver that service. So let's look at, at um, uh, uh, an example. And we've got a second poll here. So this example comes from the Nielsen Norman group who are one of the, um, uh, I suppose, uh, forerunners um, uh, 
uh, of UX and service design. And if you want to subscribe to a good newsletter, the, the, the Nielsen Norman group at nngroup.com is a great newsletter to, uh, to, to look at. In this example, we have uh, someone buying um, an electrical appliance. It may be something as glamorous as a washing machine. And what we see here is that people, um, the customer journey, the front stage, that blue part, uh, they're visiting, they're engaging with a sales assistant and choosing um, the appliances of their, of their choice. And in the meantime, that, that sales advisor is helping them with uh, sort of availability and delivery dates uh, for, for, that, for that service. So as you can see, in order to give the right customer experience, that sales advisor is very dependent upon the green backstage uh, um, uh, processes working. In essence, they need the inventory management to work appropriately so that they, they can tell about the availability of the selected um, appliance and how long it would take from the moment they leave the, the shop to have it delivered at home. So again, I wanted to ask people, and it sounds like people are already voting, what is your main focus? Do you work on the front stage with the user or is most of your work concerned around the technical enablers uh, to, to, to do things? And again, it looks like most people are working across uh, both those areas, uh, comfortable in working both on the front stage and the backstage. Uh, some people also being more technical, some people being more around, around the user. So um, I really just wanted to not take you through too many slides. I wanted to sort of uh, just go through the, those two dimensions um, in the 20 minutes that I had to present. because so I want to uh, give some more time really for the conversation to come out of what I've uh, presented, those two dimensions. So I was, at, I was going to turn us over now to, to asking questions and getting a feel for how people see this way of looking at the way in which service design and business analysts uh, fits together. Okay, so um, we've got a couple of questions already been in the chat. Um, so if we answer those first, and then I think we'll uh, ask people to unmute and, and take it forward more conversationally. So okay. um, the first one um, is from Sally, and she's asking around um, the Tom Diamond um, diagram, and her question is, what is the significance of the arrows in the double diamond? For example, do they indicate more external activity influence in the discover, stroke, define activities? Okay, so um, if you're talking about these blue arrows here, um, this, is, is, this is indicating that even though this is over time, um, it doesn't necessarily have a pure sequential feel about it because at any one point in time, you may decide to, uh, to go back and reiterate what you've done in, in the past. So the first one here, which goes from the middle circle, is saying that once you've uncovered the, your discovery, you may go back and decide that the original challenge and problem statement that you had at, at, at the start needed to be changed in some way. So you may set out to redesign a My Vodafone app to help with, um, with bills, but actually what you discover over time is that people aren't really interested in the bills because that's after the fact. What they really want to know is about their charges as they're incurring them through, during the month. So you may need to go back and redefine your challenge and then go to some more discovery work around that particular problem. And indeed, when you start delivering um, your solution, you may find the actual execution uh, does not work out the way you think it might from the prototype. And that once you start doing it, you come up with some problems around your navigation model or your interaction model. And you may go back and then do some sketches around how you may challenge and change it. So I think this is, this is the way Agile works in that um, it, it wants you to, uh, to recognize that as as you go through a design process, new things uh, emerge and come out and you may want to change what's happened in the past. So hopefully that answers the question. Yes, thanks. 
Great, thank you. Okay, so um, the uh, another question that we had in chat um, was from, I hope I, I pronounce this right, Orly, uh, do service design and BA need to be two different roles uh, stroke FTEs, or could they be combined into one? Yeah, that, that, that's a great question. I, I, I think there is a, a, a possibility for, um, for some projects for those activities to be undertaken by the same person, by one full-time equivalent, if, if the project is of that, at that certain, certain scale. What I do think is that um, the mindset of design thinking is user-centered and, um, and that uh, the aptitude and that background is something which um, you may have naturally, but I think it's very much enhanced if, if, if you um, go and learn about some of the formal techniques for, uh, for user-centered design. So I, I do have some recommendations later on on, on how you can upskill in, in those elements. But theoretically, yes, you, you can have someone doing... Um, uh, the, 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 all those activities and covering it. There's, there's been an emergence in some of the startups uh, of uh, someone called a product designer. And often that product designer takes on a lot of elements of not just uh, the service design and the UX design, but also all the other business considerations to produce, uh, to produce um, working um, you know, artifacts. Yeah. I think it's also worth mentioning at this point that when I talk about service design, I'm talking about the design beyond the glass or beyond the screen. I think hopefully that came out in the front stage and the backstage. That you would have come across user experience designers, and much of their expertise is focused around um, the layout of screens, visual hierarchy. Um, and that sort of, sort of things, call to action and, and persuasive design. That has a very um, sort of specialist skill set in which I think it, it will take quite a lot of training for business analysts to develop uh, the skills to do screen design. But when you're talking about the processes around that for, uh, for uh, the user experience, um, the customer experience, so the things outside of the glass. So if you think about the example we had <clears throat> with someone visiting a retail shop and buying a washing machine, then uh, not much of that happens on a, on a computer screen, but there's still design activities happening. So hopefully that answered that question. Cool, I think that way. Um, has yeah. anyone got any anything else they'd like to ask Kevin? Um, we'd uh, we'd like to see some engagement from everyone tonight. That's one of the things that have come through loud and clear on our outreach to people is that they'd like to have more kind of engagement. So if uh, you'd like to unmute, then uh, feel free to uh, start the conversation. Hi, Alan. Indeed, it's Aurelie again, and I've got another Aurelie, question. Hello. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, because it's uh, quite a hot topic at the moment in our company to potentially replace, you know, business analysts by service designer. So that's why okay. I asked the previous uh, question. And the other question I had is, can you use this framework for any types of project? Because for us, I mean, we've got marketing project, but we also have things like more on back office system, like amendment or, or creation of new finance system. Mm -hmm. And can we use the same concept for for all those uh, projects or is it more specific for a customer facing app? Yes, uh, great, great, great questions, Aurelie. So thank you for the other, an another question. I think my answer is yes. Um, this process I think is very uh, applicable to most uh, projects uh, which involve a service. It doesn't have to be consumer facing. It can be uh, enterprise applications or technical applications because in some ways, you have to understand what the audience is and what the use is. Um, a, a sort of validation of that is uh, that in the UK, we have something called the Government Digital Service. Mm. Um, so the GDS was originally tasked with helping, it, it focused on the websites that the UK government had for 
people who had questions around their tax return or uh, uh, taxing their, 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 their car or, or whatever it may be. Um, but they've now recognised that this method should be the method that all IT projects should be adopted for their enterprise applications as well. So if they're building something for their police department, if they're finding a database uh, to be used around for the home office, um, then they will still, uh, they're now moving into that space to make sure that those projects are following this process. So my, my short answer to, to, to your question is yes, this process is, in, is increasingly being used across all, all projects. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you for the question. And Kevin, I, I echo with that because I think it's the, um, it can be applied to non-IT project or have marketing or HR because uh, when you talked about on your, the Vodafone slide that mm. in the fine stage, you mentioned that uh, we can use how might we to, to frame or to, to understand um, yes. the problem. And I think that reminds me of um, have our, our, in our first event, um, I talked about uh, using a, a new kind of methodology called Lightning Decision Jam, and essentially kind of one of the steps is to uh, generate these how might we. So yes. um, kind of a, a sneaky promotion here. Feel free to go back to the first event and learn more about how to, to frame it. But essentially, um, I recall when I used the technique um, on projects for different clients, some of them, they all have more um, IT driven, kind of we want that as some sort of solution. Sometimes it's about, okay, we just want to understand how the strategy should look like for our organization, our, our digital transformation journey, or sometimes just how can we um, help our, our people strategy to, to grow our organization. So I think there will be a wide range of things like nature of projects that you, you can cover by kind of surface design and kind of different techniques. Yeah, I, I think you raised an interesting point around marketing. I, I think um, one of my previous clients was, was Channel 4 and they had this similar problem that they were used to developing things in a broadcast fashion. So you commission something and you send it out and the, the end user had no way of feeding back during the course of the service. Okay? So when you, when you publish um, a magazine advertisement or a TV advertisement currently, uh, you can't get a reaction from your user. And so this, now that um, many of these um, activities, marketing activities become increasingly interactive, you need to understand how the user is responding to what has been presented to them. So you have a flexible model uh, about what their likely behavior is going to be as they consume or, or, or take your service. Okay. Uh, question that I've got is, do you think uh, the techniques that you use in, in uh, service design, do you have a more holistic view of the, the kind of the, the, the product or, or the service or the project that you're delivering to the end users? Yeah, I mean, that, that's one of the things why I really like what I do. Um, I, think, I think very often um, what we're doing goes to the heart of what the company is providing to their customers in a commercial term, what they're selling or what service they're providing or for the government, it's, you know, how they're helping citizens. And you, you, you are always going back to, well, what's the meaning of this organization? How, how can your organization be a good organization and, and help your customers? Because we've seen that custom uh, organizations, which really are, are, are good to their, to their, to their users, I would get repeat business and have people coming back and, and like their services and become advocates. And so, um, so that is, is, is generally very strategic. You, you need to define what, why your service is better than someone else's. How, how, how do you make your service distinctive and, and stand out? I've often seen, and I'll be interested to get people's views that when I've worked with business <coughs> analysts, sometimes their uh, participation in those strategic conversations, um, it, it happens a bit later on that they're sometimes rather frustratingly, the recipients of a, of a business strategy and the definition of what the project has to achieve. And that they, and they, even though they have very, a lot of value to add to that problem statement, it's almost out of their hands. By the time they get to uh, being involved in the project, someone, oh, yeah. 
up, up, upstream has defined sure. that beforehand. Well, I'll be interested to get other people's views whether they feel that the business, the business analyst community is uh, getting an opportunity to be a bit further upstream these days. Um, I'd be interested to hear that. Yeah. I think that, that's a that's a good uh, good question. Quite often, uh, in the past, it's always been that actually business analysts have been brought into projects too far upstream, uh, and and <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe this is a chance for them to uh, put that right. We find that uh, you know a, a lot of service design feels like it's quite um, I don't know maybe. Uh, subjective or esoteric. Is it quite difficult to uh, measure the benefits that you get from that service design approach? Yeah, uh, it, 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 it is sometimes a little bit esoteric and conceptual um, because we're talking about sometimes emotional needs and feelings and, and behavior. And, um, and we, we, we do things like define personas where you may say some people might behave in a certain way, be very ethically driven. Some people may be very cost driven or whatever. You have different behavioral archetypes. And so when, when people see uh, the designs, they, um, they're sometimes wondering, well, all we need to do is release the functionality and we get the benefit. So measuring um, the value of service design is, is actually quite a hot topic. Um, at, that you can use marketing uh, measures such as net promoter score in NPS to see whether your service is now more uh, more liked by your customers, whether whether they become advocates. You know, um, NPS for those who who, um, who may only have come across it very briefly scores a service from one to nine, and uh, when people are asked to score it, if you score eight to nine, you're an advocate. You say this is a great service. If you score at six or seven, it's you are neutral, and anything far or under should suggest that people are not particularly fond of your service. But there are a lot of people who feel that that's a very uh, weak measure of, of the of the success of, of, of the design. But there there, there there are a number of different ways. Uh, if you if you look at the success uh, of um, of the service, you get more customers. Re returning to you to your website if it's a website that you that you're designing do you have more people who complete a journey um uh do you have a greater propensity to do something and we're trying to measure these uh these things so we're, that you we, we sometimes if it's a if it's a, a um a mobile application or website we get people in and we ask them to uh score certain attributes I, I like the design. I found it easy to undertake my task and so forth. And so you can, can come up with a scoring system for it as well. It feels to me, having worked in the, the marketing arena, that this, this approach is, it, it, it's, it's well with marketing and the way that they would uh, measure their success. Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, marketing, um, uh, in the broadcast sense, often uh, used to say, well, I know that 50% of my marketing fails. I just don't know which 50% because, you know, it gets broadcast out and, and they, they can't say which, which, uh, which was successful or not because there's no feedback channel. And I think, I think we're in a luckier position for most of the digital services that we design because you can measure dropout rates and, and you can measure bounce rates and, and other things. But all of these are controversial in, in some way. They're, they're, they're imperfect measures because we're trying to measure people's satisfaction. And that's quite a subjective thing. And I quite like that aspect of it. I, I like the fact that um, we, we can't just say everyone behaves the same, that there, there, there are going to be surprises and people react to things differently because we are a diverse population. And, um, and that's a, uh, I think that's a great challenge uh, that we work within. Yeah, interesting. Uh... Interesting view of success, I guess, and, mm. and, and, and whether you've achieved what you've set out to achieve at the beginning. I've got um, just a quick question. Um, sure. Kevin, I'm interested to, to understand kind of how the service design role fits in um, maybe with the rest of the team. So for instance, say you're working with a team of uh, business analysts, um, mm -hmm. there's a service designer there, and there's also kind of UX um, 
kind of experts in the team. Mm-hmm. Do you see the service design role as maybe being a, a lead role in that that kind of um, setup, or is it uh, maybe a lot more collaborative? It doesn't necessarily need to be uh, a lead, but uh, quite commonly um, uh, uh, it, it is. So I, th- I think you're right, uh, Alicia, that um, the uh, the service designer. Um, but, has, has, has generally a wider remit than the UX designer. Um, and, you know, it, it's hard to put people in the boxes, but the UX designer often says, right, can you please now go and design the table which sets out whether, uh, what, what benefits someone has from their American Express card or whatever, you know? So they, they, they're defined, to, they have to design the page which sets out that table. Whereas the service designer in the team it, it, sometimes it's questioning, well, do you really want to be uh, displaying uh, a table of benefits or would a, or would a better uh, approach be, I don't know, some, uh, some, some interactive bubble thing in which people talk about uh, their family circumstances. And so, so by, by, by doing so, people, it, it sort of spouts um, suggestions. I, I'm just making this up. So it, it's, the, the, the service design, I think, does generally uh take quite a questioning and challenging view on the overall service which has been delivered um i I don't know if i've answered all your question though alicia um are there parts which i haven't yet answered no no i think i think that's um it's good to to get a view i think that's kind of how i thought of it so yeah that's good to know yeah yeah Uh, i think it's something which um it's a role that people can grow into as well in the sense that if you, if you have, it, it, as you grow with more experience and you've, and you've worked in projects as a business analyst or a UX designer, and you can see the outcome for various decisions which have been made or certain dynamics, that, that makes you a better service designer because you, you, you take that experience um, and it's wider context um, into, uh, into your advice. I certainly feel that um, in my role, uh, my ability to be able to refer to many other uh, circumstances which have some parallels or some similarities really helps in service design. And I think uh, doing service design without uh, that, uh, those points of reference, I think is, 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 a, is a harder task to do. You'd have to look at best practice and uh, look to other uh, organizations and other examples to, to provide those reference points. That's great, thank you. Hmm. Yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, Kevin, hi, it's Kat. I'm, I'm interested to, given um, current circumstances and the fact that we're still um, in, in the throes of uh, a global pandemic, hmm. if in your experience you've seen any really great examples of um, service design being deployed um, in response to COVID, because a lot of organizations yeah, have really had to reimagine hmm. their service proposition. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, that's a great question, Kat. And uh, I think um, that the pandemic um, has really forced a lot of organizations to change. Well, they've just had to change, haven't they, uh, very rapidly. Um, so to answer your question, the, the one which springs to mind immediately um, ha- has been... Um, some of the changes that uh, have happened around uh, prescription uh, d- drugs, yeah? So, so previously, um, many of those, uh, the recipients of uh, recurring prescriptions, uh, that, that their normal service was one to get their prescription signed off by their doctor, uh, then go around to a pharmacy to, to physically pick up um, that uh that that prescription and obviously in an environment where uh uh, that that potentially vulnerable person has been exposed to a surgery doctors other patients and in a pharmacy uh is full of risk so i've been very encouraged to see that some of these uh uh uh, doctors and pharmacy services have recognized that a home delivery service um, which uh, uh, which uh, removes uh, that the contact elements um, is much better for everyone, and and uh, they are feeling that those those 
yeah, often an elderly uh, profile of, of those recipients of, 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 the, of the medicine um, are now ever more embracing uh, 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 this sort of um, non-contact way of getting their, their, their prescriptions. So I think, I think that, that one comes to mind. Thanks so much. Yeah. So uh, have we got anything else uh, for Kevin or can we uh, move on to uh, a little poll about our presentation tonight and a few questions about BA Flash? Yeah, I think, I think there's a final question on the, the chat. Is it about the time scale or the length of the project? I think that that could be from maybe from Anne. Yeah, I was just interested in how long the Vodafone project took using this approach. You know, is it weeks as opposed yeah. to using months? <laughs> yeah, so um, the re redesign of the Vodafone uh, uh, app uh, took, took some months, actually. It, it's there. Uh, we were working for Vodafone Group. Um, and what they need to do is consult with, they have 23 local markets. And so they have to go through a very consultative process to understand what are the needs across their globe so that they can design a universal app in which the, and it requires, say, 20% of, of adaption for, for the local markets. Um, the benefit for Vodafone in investing in that, it means that um, you don't have 23 different versions and people creating 23 different versions of essentially the same app for mm -hmm. their market. So uh, just to give you a view on how long each stage took. Um, so the discover phase arguably uh, took around three to six months because um, uh, this was doing effectively the third version of the app. The second version was still in the deliver phase. And so while version two was still being delivered, they started on the discovery of version three uh, in discovery. Um, for the, the define stage, um, that took about two months. That, that was a bit quicker because having gone through the discovery and sought the, um, the going out and, and just listening to so many different markets, um, in 10 weeks, they were able to uh, define the, um, the... The ideation took about uh, three months. Um, and that was, uh, they brought in designers from uh, many different countries, South Africa, um, uh, uh, Spain and lots of places. And then, and now they're in this phase of doing the delivery and that can take years to deliver the different functionality um, uh, that, that, that they're doing because they're always up, up upgrading different elements for, for the design. Well, that, that's interesting. Yeah. And, you know, it's looking at it, it just appears as if maybe this is something where people uh, hand the hat on of, um, oh, this is a better way, a quicker way. I want to, you it know, can be, so, it as a quicker, which yes, is what it could be, but as... Yeah. I don't want to give the wrong impression that it must be uh, as long as that. So I could say that there, there are some times when um, people have redesigned an app at Vodafone in which this whole process uh, takes uh, 12 weeks, yeah? Yeah. So... Um, and, and that, that's, um, they, they have to release apps for some of the new IoT, ser Internet of Things services that they do. So um, they did, uh, as an example, I think they did a new app for um, a, uh, it was a pet tracker, yeah? So the idea is you put um, uh, an IoT uh, SIM card on, on a collar of, on your, for your pet and you can uh, <laughs> see where your, where your dog has gone. And, um, and then, to be able to track that, you need to have a sort of a, some sort of device which has this, tells you where your dog is. <laughs> and, and that process took about 12 weeks from, you know, well, what are we doing? What, what's the problem? What, uh, what, what, uh, to getting this into the market and, and supporting the, the service. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much for, for, for all the sharing. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, so Alan has kindly pulled up the, the poll. So, if you can or um, I'll answer the, the questions there just to, to give us um, some ideas on how, how we can, uh, how you, you find this event, how we can improve that, that would be great. Uh
event and I'll do cover a quick wrap up. So uh, the next event, we, we haven't gotten the date yet, but we, we have a topic. So it's uh, about digital transformation in the, the public mm. sector. And that's really close to, to heart because um, I, I was involved in some, some projects in the, the government space as well. And sometimes I do have like two hats on, like as a consultant and also as a citizen. So um, helping the government um, do things quickly, um, better, uh, more efficient. That's, I think that's a topic that um, people will be really interested in. And the next one, so as I mentioned in the beginning, we, we would like to, to experiment, um, have a, a new type of events that you can bring your, your problems um, to the to the section and then discuss uh, with your your fellows in the, the session and maybe they will give you some inspiration on how to to resolve your problem so so yeah so uh, we are calling for facilitators for, for this session so um, do let us know if you are interested in, in that yeah and in general just um, get involved share um, our, our name with your colleagues and um, follow us on different social medias and yeah and let's build a bigger better community yeah thank you very much for for joining the other section thank you and we will uh all basically stay on for another kind of 50 minutes or so for for people to who are interested to uh meet the, the others and have further conversation thank you very much for joining thank you thank you thank you thanks thank you, thank you.